Thank you, thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's an honor, especially considering I barely got into Hampshire. It was in special ed from sixth to twelfth grade. Still, thank you, even though I know some of you were hoping the speaker would be Chairman Mao. He is dead and charges an exorbitant personal appearance fee for a communist. Uh, I regret never taking a Jan term speech, commencement speech writing class. Um, from what I know of commencement speeches, I think I'm supposed to tell you stories and give you advice until we both fall asleep. I will do my best. I'm already somewhat concerned that I believe I'm supposed to sit on this stage during the whole thing. <laughs> what, what you did is impressive, but I am not looking forward to hearing each of your names. <laughs> Congratulations, you very accomplished hipsters and self-righteous hippies. <laughs> You did it. Graduating from Hampshire is neither easy nor recommended. It is. But it is something that will actually pay off a thousandfold throughout your lives. I'd like to relieve the concerns of any parents here. By sending your child to Hampshire College, you did them a great service. And not just because they got to explore their sexuality. Mm. The difficulties they encountered figuring out how to navigate their own education mimics the kinds of challenges they'll actually face throughout their lives. Unlike traditional schools, Hampshire College seamlessly blends demanding, self-motivated academics with all sorts of weird, frustrating crap. <laughs> it's what makes it awesome. To the students, regardless of your profession, you now have the skills and perseverance to do anything. From opening a chain of environmentally friendly critical thinking stores, <laughs> to discrediting someone's misguided idea of the traditional canon of Chilean literature. You're all like Batman, tra training in the woods for years with scholars and monks. to become exceptionally creative problem solvers, except, of course, your parents were not killed in a make-believe city. You entered Hampshire being the only student from your high school who'd heard of miso soup or neutral milk hotel. But you leave now knowing that isn't what makes you special, if even you are special. You are. I loved my time at Hampshire. It's a wonderful, innovative place. I met some of my closest friends here, and Hampshire's way of thinking has shaped my life and career. You took a personal responsibility to navigate your own education. No one told you what classes to take, and as a result, none of you know math. I studied, I studied comedy here, uh, that's, that's what I did. Uh, of all the things I did, the biggest hurdle for me to graduate was my natural science division one, which I did my second to last semester before I graduated. I don't even know if that's a thing you can do now. I took a semester off before it because it seemed so overwhelming to me. My paper, which I did do, my paper was on the physiology of laughter. I worked very hard on it, though it was based on medically outdated thesis and full of misinformation. I picked the topic before I knew that most modern literature on the physiology of laughter was only in regard to schizophrenia. And before that, most theories dated back to the late 1800s. So I wrote about those. 
still, I learned a lot about the brain science methodology. I got to include a footnote that when you looked at the bottom of the page, it just said, made you look. <laughs> also, uh, also, I learned logarithms. Why? Because once I finished the whole paper, my professor, Herb Bernstein, said, no one's ever going to test your math skills again. And I mistakenly said, what, like learn logarithms? And he was like, yes. And I was like, wait, I don't know what that means. I don't even know what I said. And he's like, no, you have to do it. So I called my father, who's a mathematician, and he came from Lexington, Mass, and for two days and taught me logarithms. I then passed. The, the point is, I used to know a little math. No. The point is, Hampshire teaches you to set a goal whose scope you don't understand and then attain it two days later with the support of professors and family. What? When I first got here, I remember signing up for a class called American Capitalism. And to my slight surprise, it was about all the alternatives to American Capitalism. <laughs> I remember then going to the activities fair, and uh, there was a bunch of people from, uh, like a bunch of communist newspapers, but there was like one the workers' paper or something. And they were like, you should join our club. And I was like, I'm from Russia. I was born in Russia and came here as a kid. And... Uh, and I hate communism, I think it's terrible. <laughs> and they were like, oh yeah, no, we get it. We're not like that, we're Trotskyists, we're totally different. <laughs> and I was like, I think you're using the word totally wrong. <laughs> my, my parents brought my brother and I to America when I was four. And uh, while in Hampshire, I remember them telling me a story where they were at a party and somebody t said to them, oh, you know, we're so sorry. We hear your son's at a liberal arts school studying comedy. Our daughter wanted to do theater. Luckily, that's over. <laughs> it later turned out that girl was like 12 at the time. Anyway, <laughs> most Russian immigrants love their hard sciences. But my parents let me come to Hampshire and study comedy, something that was definitely made fun of outside of these beautiful grass walls. In, in retrospect, it actually turned out to be a really practical thing. You know, my Div 3 was a one-hour stand-up act at Saga, which I had to write and promote and produce. And uh, the things that I did for my Div 3 are the exact types of things that I did to become a comedian. You know, I, re I read a weekly show in the basement of Merrill, uh, and I still run one every week in Brooklyn. Uh, I also, you know, to promote the Div 3, that you couldn't just tweet it, because that didn't exist, so I faxed press releases from like a modem, I didn't know if it would work, to various papers. And the Hampshire, it like just being like, crazy kid does comedy, what's he thinking? And then, to my surprise, the Hampshire Gazette said to writer and photographer, and I was like, oh my God, you can fax newspapers and they'll write what you tell them. This is great. But it's something that I learned here through having to do it here. But it's... And after college, I moved to Boston, and I was definitely the only comedian faxing radio stations and newspapers, and sometimes it would totally work. And then I remember once getting a call from the Boston Globe being like, what do you mean you and Aerosmith are doing a benefit for hands? And I was like, oh, you can't just write weird, dumb things to papers? And they're like, no, no one does that. Okay. I feel like my advice is the advice like an old man gives. <laughs> I believe in the American dream. I came from a communist country where our phones were tapped by the KGB because they thought my dad had books he wasn't supposed to have. He did, but they never found them. Shh. I was told you're allowed to do whatever you want in America, and I was like, okay. <laughs> So I did horribly in high school and then went to a college to let you decide your own major. I think Hampshire is an amazing example of American ingenuity. Certainly there is a lot of liberty here. It's a place where self-reliance, self-motivation, and effort are rewarded. Unlike Skidmore. No, I don't know. Is that even a college still? I have no idea. 
A few years ago, I did a talk at a university. I can't remember where. Oh yeah, Yale. <laughs> and one student asked me, what was your backup plan? And I said, a backup plan is the first step towards failure. So, you know, so, I mean, he looked wealthy, no. But I do seriously think that don't have a backup plan. Just do the thing you would like to do for about 10 years and you'll be fine. It's true. Uh, you know, whatever your interest, no matter how weird or unattainable or far off it seems, it's not. It's completely possible and even likely if you just consistently work at it. Uh, I went to a dinner yesterday at the Red Barn. Um, no one was there. No. Uh, <laughs> faculty and, and, and seven stuff. And I was talking to someone who was like, oh, what are you going to tell people? And I'm like, I know. <laughs> He's like, you know, they have like a liberal arts degree in this economy. And I'm like, no, fuck that. This is great. You have a great opportunity. You have a very good education. You, you're trained to find solutions to problems you and others make. <laughs> it's wonderful. And the process of Hampshire is what will teach you how to, to create your own job or create your own thing. You're not stuck in something. You can make your own way. So just because you move to some city and there's not a job, make that job or find it or get a bunch of friends together and make something and do it. Uh, so that's it. You'll be fine. Thank you. And do it for 10 years. Good night.